that I know we all want God to be loving, we all want God to be good, and He is those things, but He is those things on His terms. See, most people want God to be good, but they don't want God to be just. They want God to forgive everyone, but they don't understand how it is He can do that without compromising His own justice. See, the mafia have no fear of a corrupt judge, do they? But they have a great deal of fear for a good judge. And the truth is, if folks, you have any questions, I mean, obviously we're out here uh, today just sharing the message of good news. I'm a pastor of a local church. There's a microphone over here. Last night we had people asking all kinds of questions, and it was a lot of fun to reason with people. The Bible actually says in Isaiah uh, chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Let us reason together. So we encourage people to actually think seriously about their eternity. And, uh, and, and, and do you have questions about that? Are you, a, are you an evolutionist? Are you a skeptic? Are you a philosopher? Maybe you're a smart, smart guy. Maybe, maybe you're smarter than I am. And there's a very high percentage chance that that's true. Do you guys have any questions about uh, church? You guys go to church? You do, right on. Where do you go to church, man? Right in the Basilica. The Basilica. Guys, let me ask you, can I ask you a question. Okay. What happens when you die, dude? Can you get up? You seem like a, are you a very confident guy? I would like to you, Get on the mic for a second. I'd like to hear from you. What's your name, dude? Uh, Blake. Man. Blake. Blake. I'm Corey Blake. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Are you guys, you guys okay with him hanging for a minute? Yeah, <laughs> Are you guys going to comment, too? Do you guys go to church? Yeah. You do? What, what's your background? What, what religion? You're Roman Catholic. You're Roman Catholic? Oh, you guys are three Catholic brothers. Yeah. Okay, my background was Roman Catholic. Right on. So, uh, if I was to tell you that I'm a, I'm a Christian, a biblical Christian, born-again Christian... Do you think that's different than what the faith that you hold? Um, maybe slightly. But slightly? It's not, everyone, like, probably believe the same things I do, just maybe a couple of practices. Okay, so Blake, right? Yes. So Blake, if I was to ask you point blank, a really important question, right. one thing all these folks share in common walking the streets today is that we're all going to die. Yes. No one wants to talk about that, I get it. You guys are young and healthy and you're bulletproof. What do you have, 18? No, actually, I have 18. Good, good guess, eh? Yeah. Well, 5 foot 8, 9, 10? 11. 11, all right. I used to be in a circus, no kidding, totally. So Blake, so you're you're a Roman Catholic guy. What is the Catholic response to this question? What happens when someone dies? What do you believe happens? Well, the Catholic response would be they either uh, they go to heaven, they go to purgatory, or they go to heaven. Okay, so there's three options. Yeah. Okay. So so do you believe generally, Blake, that good people go to heaven? Um, that how it works? To an extent. Okay. Yes. How about you? Which way which way where are you headed? Are you headed up, you're headed down? I don't know. Maybe okay. maybe to purgatory. Purgatory for a bit. You I don't, guys, know, I don't you guys... know entirely believe in purgatory. Though, so okay. I, I don't know. I think it's a little far fetched. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. So, so now, it says this in the Bible. It says, for you are saved by grace. Okay. This is Ephesians 2, verses 8 9. It says, you are saved by grace through faith, not, not your own doing. It's not a result of works so that no one may boast. You are saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God. Now, it's not a result of works. Now, how does that reconcile um, with, with your Catholic faith? Do you believe that's true, that you're not saved by works? It's purely a gift of God, it's grace? No. Okay, so you believe that you are saved by works? Yes. Okay. I mean, like, I'm Catholic and these guys are Catholic, but I wouldn't say that we completely agree with everything that they, with all the things in the catechism and things like that. It's things like that that, you know, okay. straddle the line. That's fair, man. You're very, very honest. Cool. Okay. So this is, uh, tell me, uh, tell me if you agree with this. This is actually what the Bible says, just like this, right? And I'm actually, I'm a biblical Christian. I believe this book is totally true, dude. Cover to cover. I don't believe we evolved. I believe we were specially created, made in God's image and likeness. Uh, I believe that God is holy. God is just, but God is also loving. But here's what it says. It said, God in his great mercy and love, he created us to worship him and to enjoy him forever. Right? We're all made in his image. Now, what we've done, though, is we've rebelled against the God we do know exists. Anyone listening now, there's no atheists, there's no agnostics, there's only suppressors of truth. That's what the Bible says. So we've all rebelled against our creator. We know this God exists, not just any God, not the small g. Everyone knows the one true God exists, but they reject him and they go their other way, the other way. They go their own direction. And what they do is they actually willfully, by choice and by birth, we're sinners by, by birth, original sin, and we're sinners by choice. We choose to reject God. We lie, we cheat, we steal, we lust, we hate, we do all these things. God sees our thoughts, our words, our actions, the intentions of our heart. And, and he looks at a guy like you, Blake, or a guy like me, and he says, Wow, you've been a busy boy. And because God's good, you believe God's good? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, Blake, God's goodness is our greatest problem? And I'll tell you why. Because the goodness of God demands that you are held accountable for your actions. 
you just think if someone hurt one of your friends here, let's say they killed one of your friends, that'd be terrible, you would want justice against that person, right? Because why? Because crime demands payment. Yeah, but God teaches forgiveness. Okay, that's a great question. So how then does God, because you're onto something here, how then does God, Blake, forgive people without compromising his own goodness? How does he do that? How does God reconcile? Well, we don't know. It's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Okay. Well, that's, he actually says that there is a mysterious aspect to the good news, but it's a very, very clear message. Here's what he says, because if that was the end of the story, Blake, everyone walking these streets right now, including me, would be in the same boat. We know God exists. We reject that God. We've rebelled against that God. Because God's good, he's got to punish us. Right? We ignore him. We go the other way. We don't want God. I had a guy over here telling him last night, he doesn't believe God exists. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says you know God exists. Right? So we do all that. And then we want things from God. We say, well, why isn't he fixing the problems of the world? Why is he doing this? And see, we still continue to reject God. That's the problem. Right? If that was the end of the story, do you agree that you've lied knowing it's wrong, you've stolen knowing it's wrong, you've used God's name in vain knowing it's wrong, your conscience has told you, Blake, don't do that, but you violate your conscience, right? You go against it. Do you not agree that if God is as good as he says he is, he should give you justice? That's a difficult question to answer. Uh, well, do you not think that, that it, it's a covenant upon God? If God is holy and God is good, he must punish people for doing wrong. Do you not agree with that? He's got to. Do you want him or punished? Yeah. yeah. do you want Osama bin Laden punished? Sure. Of course. Why? Well, he was pretty so. Right. And here's the thing, Like What we all do is we compare ourselves just to a lower standard of goodness and not a higher one. See, God says this. Matthew 5, 48. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Are you perfect? No. Neither am I. We've missed the mark. That's why it says in Scripture, all of sin and falling short of God's glory. God's standard is actually perfection. Unless you're perfect, you can't go to heaven. That's a problem, isn't it? Well, I don't know if that's exactly the standard. Come on back, sir. I'd love to hear from you. You probably have a great question. We appreciate when people just don't yell at us, so I get to hear what he said. It'd be great to hear his question. He's probably got a great question. Come on back, man. Come on back and ask your question. That'd be fantastic. But Blake, so here's where we're at. We've all sinned. We're, we're, we're deserving of God's judgment. God says that he has prepared a lake of fire for those who reject him. Originally prepared for the devil and his angels, God has a lake of fire that he will judge people for all eternity. We don't disappear. We, we're not annihilated. We are consciously punished for rejecting God by the holiness of God. That's what the Bible says. Now, that's frightening. Would that, would, that, would that concern you? I mean, here you are with your friends. Would that's if you take the Bible literally. We've been taught at our Catholic school. Right. Uh, not to take it literally. Take okay. It conception. Right. Contextual. Okay, so do you believe the Bible's true? Yeah, well, the message is true. The message is true. The message itself is true. Okay, we'll get back to that in a sec. But do you know how the story ends up? Because if that was the end of the story, we'd all be in the same boat. I'm not judging you, dude. Yeah, yeah, right. I, you're, that's why. That's why we don't take it literally. Well, how, 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 how do you think this? What do you think this means? All liars will have their part in a lake of fire. It makes me feel like I'm going to hell. How, how would you not? How would, how else would you understand? That? I'm just curious. What else would could well, that possibly be? Lake of fire. Be? That's more of a symbol. A symbol for what? You think, can you any think of any positive symbol out of that? Any positive symbol? Out of a lake of fire? Well, All liars. Could as, that could go anywhere. It's a bad conscience. That could go punishment uh, from others. It's a lake of fire. It's just a symbol for bad things happening. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? The Bible says something entirely different than that. Hold your thought. It, uh, you're, you're an insightful guy, but that's not what it says. It actually says there's a literal conscience weeping, gnashing of teeth. There's a parable of a guy named Lazarus in the Bible, and it's actually a, 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 a it's a it's a parable, but it's a it's a real story about a guy who who ends up in hell, suffering under God's wrath and condemnation, and he wishes that his own loved ones wouldn't end up there. He's like, man, this is terrible and terrifying. Now. Pending this, that hell is how, how God explains it in his word, would that concern you that if you died tonight and God gave you justice, you're a young guy, but you've, you've been busy like I've been busy sinning. I mean, dude, if just your thought life, you're a young guy, if, if there was a computer chip inserted behind your ear, and uh, say from the time you were five, recording and, everything I've done, recording everything you've thought, not okay. just what you've done, okay. and we went up to IMAX at, say, 7 o'clock, we had a 7 o'clock showing of Blake's Mental movie. We invited your mom. Your good movie. Yeah, your mom. You want your mom there? Um, you want your mom there to see what you watched on the internet? Well, just ask him. Probably. Probably.
Probably not. I'm with you. Well, I wouldn't want my At the same team. time, um, if I could just skip ahead a little bit. Okay. I had, like, yep. What you're saying is everybody sings, right? Yes. You know, and you know, wouldn't have it just be perfect as Jesus, as they say, but if, oh, you we're think not. About, if you think about it, nobody's perfect, so then by that logic, would nobody go to heaven? You know what? That's a great bridge to the whole point of why I'm standing on it. Why I look like an idiot doing this. This is, this is, this is a great point. That's my question. Okay. How is it, if you, if, now you understand the creator, he decides the terms of the relationship. Yeah. Pinocchio did not decide the terms, Geppetto did, you agree with that? I mean, he created you, God dictates the terms. God says you've got to be perfect. You're not, I'm not. So, well, what do we do? Well, we arrived at a conclusion, first of all, it would be right for God to punish us because we've rejected him willfully. We, we've went against our conscience. We've said, I don't want that. I don't want that God. And we've even done worse. We've made a God in our brain that we're more comfortable with. We, we've said, well, God's forgiving, but, you know, yeah, that, that's true. But he's forgiving on his own terms, and this is what he's done. God, at, at the appointed time, he steps out of heaven. In real-time space history, he becomes a man, Jesus Christ, God and man in one. He walks this earth perfect. Jesus always did that which pleased the Father. I'm a Christian pastor. Jesus is perfect. I'm not, but he is. He goes at the appointed time to a, a Roman crucifixion, the worst death ever. I mean, if you've seen the Passion, sort of Captain Matthew. Yeah, no, we've been taking the title this, yeah. Yeah, but it, but I mean, but, but it's great that we've been taught this. A lot of people in the Western culture know this message a little bit. But it wasn't just the the hands of the Romans that saved. I mean, you, you know, Jesus had his beard pulled out. He was whipped and beaten. That's all terrible, terrible stuff. Terrible. But it went way beyond that. The, the most awesome and terrifying thing about the message of the cross is this. It wasn't the Romans that put Jesus there. It was his father that put him there. The Bible says it was the will of the Lord to crush him. In other words, in a justice-satisfied way, God sent his son into the world to die that the death required as payment for sin. God pours his wrath, his justice due to me upon Jesus Christ. He looks upon Jesus as the guilty one now. He was without sin, but he became sin. God crushes him. God, as it were, satisfies justice by punishing Jesus. That's why the sky went black in three attempts. And then Jesus dies under the weight of that justice that he didn't even deserve, but he willingly took it on. He goes back from the dead three days later. He defeats death itself. And now he's saying, you know what? In all honesty, wait, church isn't going to help you, man. It's not about going to church. How's that going to save you? It's not, it's not even about praying some magical prayer. The Bible says the only way we can be saved from God's wrath to come. Because that's the most frightening thing, is it's God's wrath we're talking about. God says, if, wait, if you will turn from your sin, the word is repent. It means I have a change of mind. I turn away from my sin toward Jesus Christ in faith. And I throw myself upon the mercy of him. Not my priest, not the Pope, not Mary, for goodness sakes. The Bible says Jesus is our only mediator. You understand that? Yep. The Pope's not going to help you. It's, I was raised Catholic, man. I get that. I understand. I understand the loyalty there. But the Bible says it's only, Jesus is the only way to the Father. So we put ourselves, throw ourselves upon the mercy of him. What happens is a beautiful thing. When we repent of our sin and put our faith in Christ, he takes the heart that I used to have, I thought church was like, are you serious? I just thought it was stupid. He gives me a new heart with new desires, and I actually desire now to walk with him, to follow him, to share this message with people, to love people, to serve people. But very simply, you broke the law, I broke the law, Jesus paid my fine with his life's blood. If I turn from my sin and put my faith in him as the object of my faith, that my joys, my passions, my affections, then he saves me radically from the wrath of God. Now you understand Mary, Mary in her prayer of Magnificent in Luke says, my God, my Savior. Mary needed a Savior. The thief on the cross, and the thief on the cross. I'm sorry to interrupt you, I actually have to keep going. Gotta, like, I appreciate that. Yeah. Dude, do you, have a, go do you have a Bible at home? Yes. Do you, do you read it? Okay. Occasionally? Dude, I'd encourage you to, to start in the Gospel of John, man. You know what? It's pretty overwhelming slugging through the first little bit. Start in the Gospel of John. John wrote so that you would believe. He wrote it so that you would come to faith in Jesus. So I just encourage you, dude, pick it up and read it. All right. Cool? Thank you very much. Like, thanks, man. Okay, good talking to you.